scratchy little ears. Okay. Hello, everybody. Oh, welcome to Houston of a Problem. It's Monday. It's episode. Oh, I forgot to update the episode number. We're on 427. Oh, my goodness. One sec. Let me fix that. Uh, save. There we go. <clears throat> fix that. One problem averted. We're about solving problems here. Okay. So. Um, it appears everybody is, uh, getting lawyers, lots and lots of lawyers, just lawyering, doing the lawyer thing, uh, in any conundrum, the lawyers are always the winners on both sides. Uh, so it looks like Bruno, who's done lots of DD for Bed Bath & Beyond, he is, uh, attempting to represent class nine, the shareholders in the bankruptcy, because there has been apparently no one doing it. Other people are like, no, it's just like Neely Doss. And so there's going to be lots of fighting. But we're going to have Bruno, Bruno on next week. And he is going to explain the pros and cons of what he's doing. And uh, figure out, you know, what his goal is in the end. And how that should work. It's expensive. And uh, I can't afford to get the lawyers for it. So I just do this. And just hope the process will work itself out. Um, <clears throat> there's been... A lot of talk about the settlement of $3 million in the Torch merger case. So someone sued MetaMaterial and somehow got a $3 million settlement. I'm not sure what they were suing about. I'm not sure what the purpose was. But if you want uh, one and a half cents per share, cool. Um, I'm much more concerned about what MMTLP is doing. And uh, speaking of lawyers, hopefully we'll have Rosa on on Wednesday. I've not heard back from her yet if she's going to be able to do it. I sent her a message. She said, check in on Monday and uh, see if we can do it. And uh, not heard back yet. So <clears throat> also we'll have Thomas Petterfee for a special Thursday show. Uh, it's not the real Thomas Petterfee. It's the online version who is a Sears wizard. And uh, he'll be joining us from Europe and talking all about what's happening in Sears and Lampert and everything else. Um, do I have anything else to add up top of the show? Duh. I don't think so. I think I can do one of these. Oh! You know what? We can also do... Oh, well, i got to turn that one off, because... <laughs> but I can also do one of these, because the Batman just showed up. Batman! Oh, Get in there. Okay, I want to turn off the Batman. Okay. Uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> the other daytime intro was still on. Boom. I'm making that mistake. All right. Those are all, those are all doing their thing. Uh, how do I, how do I, okay. Sorry. Um, Leo B or sorry, low B the different there's, there's Leo B and there's low B low B just gifted memberships. Antonio Baez, Iggy Lemon, cook de capo. Uh, Jethro, Keith Dixon, Prontal, MDK, KCTB, Timothy Sudik, and TXB900. Got a couple of lurker lurker hunting in there, a little lurker fishing. We'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, and I think I saw Mr. Super Chat here. Where were you? <clears throat> Bill Coin, stock market is beyond ridiculous. Well, that's, yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, microcomputer... What are they called? Microcomputer strategy or whatever is like twelve hundred dollars. Nvidia is still climbing like crazy, even though it seems that uh, uh, the, a lot of their earnings are coming from the mob buying computer chips to funnel to China. So, so expect me to turn gray and disappear here. But yeah, okay, everything's off. Got that off. Oh. New sponsor, uh, viewer, her pen name is Ann Arbor. She wrote a memoir in honor of her mother, and she needs a little bit of funding 
to help get this sucker uh, self-published and into bookstores. So she's about halfway there. She needs help raising a little bit more. So if you are a, a literary person, we've had a, a few few folks uh, published works uh, be our, our board sponsor. There's a link in the description, or you can just kind of read that if you want. Uh, GoFundMe page is there. I'm, I will post actually a link to the GoFundMe. Um, oops. Come on. Here we go. Copy that into the chat. Bam. And help her out. It's a, a piece of work done with love in honor of a mom. And who can't appreciate that? Right. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll probably post a link to the uh, subreddit as well. Um, to the to the chat. Daniel Bachelor Houston. Just had chili and cheese on spaghetti. The world is doomed or my GI track. Not sure yet. Chili spaghetti. That actually seems like a combo that would work pretty well. Uh, I mean, chili is just like a modified version of pasta sauce anyway, right? Just has like, you know, it's just smokier. Uh, Mikes, happy birthday, dude. I heard GP can talk starting tomorrow. I'd love to see you interview your brother too. Thanks, PS, eat a moon pie. Uh, Gardner will never come on the show. <laughs> and uh, I said, hey, can you get George on the show? He was like, he will never come on your show. So those are those are the, answer, the, the answers I got from that. Is the only guy doing the third? SJ Chang 47, fourth. Uh, Jason Blackwell. Mm -mm. Hey, Houston, the storm last night blew the awning off my roof. The insurance adjuster said I'm not covered. Hmm. <sighs> okay. Nyanya D. Biz. Absolutely. I am ready to start listening to these guys and Matt. <clears throat> if George can talk tomorrow, why wouldn't I be able to talk? I was told six months, and that'd be April 1st. I don't know. We'll see. Jimmy up nice today, 1.8%. Also, I read that uh, there's like two to five million shares of waiting to be shorted uh, available for lending in GME, which is the most in years. Um, I think they're they're loading up for shorting at earnings to keep the price from going bonkers if the, if the earnings are a okay. But if the earnings are awesome, you wouldn't want to short it anyway, right? Because they'll just increase your liability. But at this point, they got so much liability that you know. <clears throat> Scott Pollum rants, although he is a douche sometimes, did a pretty good video on a potential earnings for GameStop Core 4 2023 results. Cool. I will never watch it. <laughs> Hi, Ava. Hi, Jersey. He says, Zoom, I got to do a nub. Uh, current bankruptcy is just an empty box. All the good bits out of the hands of... Out of the hands of willfully ignorant plan man and lawyers. Yeah. Uh, I think the dip people know what they want to do. The plan man's job is just to recoup as much as he can for everybody in the meantime... And the minute the dip people make their credit bid, plan man's out of a job. So pew, away he goes. And then a new board will take over and it will be that. Um, the the ridiculous amount of knolls are very, 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 very attractive. So the knolls are worth way more than what the dipper Philo has paid into this thing. <clears throat> BOH, hi Houston, what do you mean by class nine? Not sure what the context is for that. Class nine is the shareholders. Us. I think class six is the unsecured shareholders. There's a there's nine classes and, and uh, we are class nine. We are the ones uh, who matter the least because all about bankruptcy is all about getting people owed money, their money and shareholders are the last ones in line to get their money. But we aren't looking to get our money. That's the thing. So the plan man doesn't actually care about us because we're not actually looking to get paid. And he he says we're not going to get paid. We're looking for a credit bid which will result in us receiving new equity because the credit bid would be for the knolls and to utilize those knolls, the shareholders must be, must make up 50% of the new company, at least 50% of the new company. So that's what we're looking for. A person with no name has done a little, a little fishing. Joseph Lee, Hazel A, Fred Jones, Gary Klopp. Ooh, a Klopp. And D. Um, I have a dear friend who's a Klopp and... Her family owns Klopp Ranch Vineyards. They make among the greatest Pinot Noir in the world, or so I'm told. It smells delicious. So, welcome, Gary Klopp. Uh, 
where was I? Oh, I lost my spot. Sailing Sapien, Houston. Do you think Jake and Sal could be plants? They seem to be off with their info. No. I don't think they're plants at all. I think they've done a pretty good job parsing information and digging deep into stuff that I don't have time to dig deep, dig deep into. Uh, Sal currently is taking care of his ill mother. So he'll, hopefully he'll hopefully come back. We were talking about having them on to do a show, uh, but may have to wait and wait until uh, Sal's mom's on the mend, I guess. But we'll we'll see about that. Um, <clears throat> B.O.H. Oh, I did that one. Kelly Reed. It's funny how Houston and a lot of us here have been talking about the dominoes falling, being downvoted on other subreddits that want to believe that the economy is great. Well, dominoes are starting to fall. And unlike 2008, every type of debt is beyond toxic right now. These next years are going to be a roller coaster. The debt's a big thing. I'm not talking like, like federal government debt. I'm talking about personal debt, corporate debt, real estate debt, uh, auto debt like it it is people are underwater on their credit cards they're underwater on the new car purchases they're underwater on their homes they're underwater on their commercial real estate ventures they're underwater on their AB, airbnb investments uh corporations are borrowing money like crazy to continue doing stock buybacks uh to keep stock prices from falling but all they're doing is like vanquishing their their uh uh capital on hand uh, i don't know if any of you guys saw uh, John, uh, John Oliver's show last night, but he went deep into Boeing and not quite as deep as I was hoping, but you know, he's only got like a 30 minute program. So he talked about all the big points that, that the McDonnell Douglas people, all they cared about was share price and only caring about share price has destroyed the company, which has resulted in dun, 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 an erosion of share price. If you focus on making a good company that people trust and think is safe and valuable, your stock price is going to do great. If all you care about is a stock price, and you start making shitty products to get people killed, guess what? They're not going to use your products anymore, and your stock price is going to erode like crazy. Their goal of cutting in half the development of the 787 from what they spent on developing the 777, right, ended up costing them $25 billion more than they planned. If they just done it right the first time, it would have cost them like $5 billion and they would have been done. But no, they want to do it for two and a half billion. And then they made so many gargantuan mistakes and made such shitty planes that there's, that there's $25 billion in 787s on the tarmac at Payne Field that will never fly. Well, maybe we'll see that. Uh, I don't know if they've torn apart yet, but I might be able to see that on yield Google Earth. I got to, where am I? Oh, I'm in Wyoming. Okay. Go there. Google Earth. Come on, there we go. Let's see if we can get pain field here. Okay. <clears throat> Everett. Pain field, bam. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, well, some of these might be coming out of the, uh, the big Boeing plant up here. So Boeing, the largest, one of the largest buildings in the entire world is the Boeing facility up here uh, that makes 747s and things. But I'm pretty sure that something like a whole row of these are 787s that will never be allowed to fly. <laughs> so they just sit there. There's like nine of them worth $25 billion and they'll never be able to fly because they're such garbage. Look at the lovely little lake they have right there. Um, yeah, this is it. Yeah, this, this is the largest like commercial building in the world by volume. It's huge. 747s come rolling out of there. Well, yeah, it's it's uh, absolutely ridiculous. Maybe these are the 787s. I don't know. I don't know my planes very well. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's a whole bunch of them like taking up an entire chunk there. International Guard Base. Yeah. Anyway. Dude, it's way too early. Get up there. Come on. It's way too early. Come on. Come on. Don't nuggy stare at me right now. Uh, Brandon Miller. Please ask Ron to talk to Ham Short Killer about Toxic Lynn Partners. I, I've sent a message to Ron. I don't expect to hear from Ron until he gets back from Italy, from the uh, the conference they're going to, to reveal whatever news it is they're going to reveal. But uh, Ham does have a lot of people worked up into a tizzy. 
about Lind financing this, and he's got a lot of good examples that that Lind seems like whenever they throw some financing a company's way, that company magically just dies within like six months. So uh, I think it'd be a good thing for Ron to answer, and and uh, hopefully he's got an answer for us. The thing about Ron that's different than the other companies is that he's got deep pockets. And these other companies are way more dependent upon this financing. Um, Ron's a classic rich guy who's who who falls under the never invest your own money type scheme where you just get other people's money in that thing and then you get it rich. Uh, so if he doesn't have to, you know, he will, he will use other people's funding. Um, I'll be curious to hear what he has to say about, about Lynn's role in this because um, they seem to be evil. I will totally... Grant Ham, that uh, that one. So <clears throat> yeah. Avi A, good day. Houston market closed with a red dive. BTC up, GME up, no labs up. Will no labs ever come back below fifty cents? I I, I wouldn't doubt they'll try, but I think they're gonna be popping out news here pretty regularly about progress. And each time they do that, the press release will go out. People go, oh, maybe I should get in on that until they finally get that FDA approval. And then all of a sudden it's on. <clears throat> American Mon. Happy birthday, Houston. Mon. <laughs> we'll catch you later. Have a good one. You too. Uh, peasant claims. Uh, Eric, Houston, BTC skyrocketing every day. Do you think it will crash too when the stock market crashes? I think BTCC will or BTC will crash before the market crashes. Uh, we we saw the carrying the coal mine happen like every single time when when GME was having those huge waves of volatility, right? Go from hundred bucks to three hundred fifty, back down to hundred bucks, up to three hundred fifty. It was doing that over and over again. The weekend before that price would scream. The, the all of the cryptos would absolutely bottom out. And usually they would pump some weird shit coin to obscene levels during that period and then flash it out. So I think what we're seeing is uh, a big pump. It's, it's time with a lot of stuff. They've got these ETFs that have formed. They've got the halving event that's coming up. Um, but in the end, they will dump that shit and use it to help cover uh, although now that the fact there's the ETFs, they might start being able to use Bitcoin as collateral towards plays other than outside of crypto. But I still think even, even though you got big guys like JP Morgan creating ETFs, I still think they look at it with skepticism and kind of, a mm, really, we're going to use this while we can type, type, type idea. Uh, I had to send... $150 of Bitcoin to somebody the other day. It cost me 25 bucks. Not cheap. It's cheaper to send them m money via like uh, t telegram or something. Um, <clears throat> so it cost me 25 bucks and took 14 hours for it, for it to get, get processed by six different ledgers. That is such a narrow bandwidth. And if I wanted to send it faster, it was going to cost me like $75. So 50% premium on sending that hundred bucks. It's useless. Like, oh, I want to go to the grocery store. Oh, I saved 50 cents on milk. I got this box of pasta for 80 cents off. I got these bananas for 16 cents a pound. And my total bill is five dollars. Let's swipe this thing. And I just spent an extra ten dollars to process this payment. And the and uh they can't print my receipt for 14 hours because it can't go through. Like just it's so dumb. Like, you know, if I'm if I'm sending $60 million to, uh, I don't know, some drug dealers in Colombia, sure, 14-hour processing, I get it. It's going to take some time. They're going to have a gun to my head the entire time until it goes through. Uh, but, like, it's not going to be useful currency if you can't process, like, 100,000 transactions a minute because that's what happens around the world. People swipe their cards at the grocery store, gas station, you know, the the concert hall, the baseball game, the subway kiosk, like these things get swiped everywhere all the time. And you are not going to have the currency of the future if it takes 14 hours for a transaction to go through. 
You really want to leave already? You just got here. Cats. <clears throat> anyway. Kofi Sofa. Hey there, HW. Rumors are flying on X right now that Alpine has been shut down. ZGYL up 30% today. Uh, uh, they were supposed to get shut down. They were, they were like getting the fingers pointed on, we're going to liquidate you. So they finally did it. I would wondering if they're going to have to start closing everything or if they are or have, or like where their liabilities go. Dan Harris, we have to reach Anna up here in your show. Uh, not yet. We'll hopefully, hopefully get around here, Dan. Uh, copy and paste. If Alpine is shutting down, they can't cover their shorts and won't have to. We've seen hedge funds go bankrupt and not cover. Well, the liability goes to the prime broker. So we'll go to Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan, whoever happens to uh, uh, be in charge of that. Uh, Lord Ape, it was nice to meet in Florida. Thoughts on BBBBBY? My personal thoughts on BBBBBY is we won't see any action until the pump and dump case is gone. That we've got a hearing coming up on the 17th with the the stocking horse bid stuff and i i don't see that hearing taking place until the pump and dump is out of the way so i would not doubt if we see it postponed yet again so we just sit we twiddle them thumbs and uh that's what we got we just thumb twiddle i do think that there's a plan for uh, a credit bid but I don't think we'll see it until the pump and dump case is out of the way because I think Ryan Cohn is behind the credit bid. And he, what I don't think he wants is to give Judith and Todd the ability to keep suing him. Even though the case, this case should have been thrown out a year ago because he never qualified under the, the terms of 16B anyway. The judge should have gone, yeah, this doesn't work. Toss it. That's what he should have done in the first week. But still going. Um, so either... Plan man takes over as plaintiff and then they reach some sort of settlement and it's gone or uh, uh, they dismiss entirely and just toss the case. If Jude, if, if Todd and Judith are still are in there, like if they like the, uh, how do I put this? Uh, the argument that they should be removed as plaintiffs is that they no longer have shares. Right, because they've 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 uh, removed the shares from everyone's count. So if the court goes, yeah, they have no standing, and dismisses, or they have no standing, and we're going to let Bed Bath take over, or we're just going to toss this case entirely. Um, cool. If all of a sudden there's a credit bid and everyone gets their equity back, their shares back, then all of a sudden Todd and Judith have standing, and they don't think they want that. I think they want them just to piss off and be gone. So I think we're waiting on that. I don't think we'll see anything cool happen until that happens. Uh, Thomas Norman. Houston, is it me or does Ryan Cohen have one blue eye, one brown eye on the picture with Pulte? And later that night on the picture with his brother in Pulte, it seems that he got to brown. I did not notice. Could be a reflection thing. Uh, let's see here. Um. Uh, I don't see. Where's the stupid picture? Did they manage to delete it from the internet? <laughs> ah. Sear Panthers. G H E R S. There you go. Oh, it kind of does look that way. Oops. And oops, nope. There we go. Okay. So it does look he's got a blue eye there and looks like kind of like a brown eye there. I think that might be flash or light coming in. Uh but yeah, it does look like he's he's got two tone there. Interesting. Might be lighting. So I don't I think I've seen other pictures with him. Uh, Ryan Kuhn. Yeah, both brown there. So it must be a lighting thing. 
That's with some sort of blue light reflecting into his eyeball. It looks like he's he's brown eyed all the way. <clears throat> okay. Where was I? Carl Lumley Houston, did you see the Canadian pension plan unloaded a $46 million New York office building for $1? Yes. Also, a 24-story uh, building in Allentown, Pennsylvania just sold for $20 a square foot, which is ridiculously low. Um, commercial real estate is collapsing. Uh, Julio sent me an interesting article talking about all the uh, the the... Commercial real estate bonds have been sort of like rejiggered and that it it made the bonds that are due in 2024 jump from about 500 billion to about a trillion dollars in maturities. And we're not going to see any of those things get paid. <laughs> we're just not. We're they're just, they're just not going to pay them. Uh, so uh, what then? Well, now you got a trillion dollars in liabilities, most of which is going to reside with regional banks and most of those banks are going to get seized by the FDIC, and that's it. They're going to be done, which means the bigger banks are going to get even bigger. Uh, who knows what chain of custody is going to happen on those buildings? Like, are the big banks going to assume control of those buildings for a penny on the dollar? That's my that might, that's my, might be what happens. Like, so let's say you have a, a hundred million dollar building, right? And the uh, investors are like walking away because they know they can only sell the building for like 15 million bucks. So like, yeah, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to pay our balloon payment on this thing. It's all yours, you know, regional bank of Iowa and regional bank of Iowa is like, fuck. So they got to do this giant write down because they're accepting this property. They know it can't sell for anything close to what the paper value is on those bonds. And as a result, they now are underfunded by like, 30% on their deposits on one building. So the FDIC is like, well, we got to seize you. You have no more money. So they seize you. And they might have like a billion dollars in assets or something total under management or in deposits. And so along comes a bank of America or Wells Fargo or whatever. And they're like, okay, well, we will, we will take control of these assets. We will pay uh, $1 million or $10 million or whatever uh, to take control of these assets. So they do. And now they have these buildings. These buildings are worth not much, but they spent $10 million, got themselves perhaps $500 million or a billion dollars in real estate. And they're like, all right, well, that works for us. Uh, they, they, can, they can come out on top of that. The customers now become customers of Wells Fargo or Bank of America or whoever takes them over. And those banks just got a little bit bigger. And the regional options just got a lot smaller. So... Like ultimately what needs to happen is even those big banks need to get smashed, but like a, like a glass vial and shattered into like 500 little pieces. And we sort of need to like start all over again. Um, but then it comes with, I'm just going to sidetrack now that comes with like the need to have an antitrust reckoning in this country. We need to break up everybody. We need to break up Facebook. We need to break up Google. We need to break up Amazon. We need to break up Microsoft. We need to break up Apple. We need to break up the oil companies. We need to make it so that, you know, we need to repeal the 1996 Telecommunications Act, making it so that so that uh, uh, networks can't own local stations and limiting the number of local stations that can be owned by one entity and limiting who owns all the billboards in the country. Like we've got too much monopoly going on in too many areas and we need to break it all up and force competition again. Uh, it used to be that Georgia consistently had the lowest gas prices in the entire country because it was illegal for an oil company to own a gas station and for the oil company to be the distributor of fuel. So the oil company could get the fuel to a distributor, but then could not sell the fuel directly to the gas stations after that. So there was like 1,200 oil distributors or gasoline distributors in Georgia. And so other places had allowed this monopolization to happen, Georgia would consistently have like 40 cent cheaper gas than the rest of the country. And even that got eroded uh, in the last 20 years. And now gas stations in Georgia are owned by the oil companies. The distributors are like two different oil companies. And that's it. Um, a lot of the inflation we see is due to us just getting raked over the coals by a monopoly because we have no other choice. Right? Like if Exxon... like. 
Does the price of oil matter if ExxonMobil owns the oil field, owns the refineries, owns the distribution networks, and owns the gas station? If they're doing everything at cost, who gives a shit what oil prices are? Because they can do it at cost, right? They're completely vertically integrated. So when ExxonMobil's like, oh my goodness, oil's at $80 a gallon, I guess gas has got to be 50 bucks. They, they're completely disingenuous because they don't pay for that. <laughs> they, they own it from start to finish. They, all they have is the cost of doing business, the, the, the overhead. And they could easily sell gasoline at $1.25 a gallon and still make a profit at this, at this point. But they don't need to because they own everything. They can charge whatever they want and pretend like the oil prices are affecting them. Um, I'm probably going down a long rabbit hole in this one. Uh, anyway, okay. <clears throat> Kelly Reed, happy birthday, HW. The Body Shop Canada parent took revenue, left the company $3.3 million in debt. Court docs say this is what happened to Sears and a bunch of other companies and employees uh, lose their jobs. And... And... Where'd you go, Kelly Reed? Where's the... Uh... Where's the... Uh... And <laughs> can I read? I don't see where the and finishes. Rose of State, Richard Joseph. And dot dot dot. I think we're gonna get a lot of a lot of answers from uh Monsieur Pettifee on Thursday as to what Eddie Lampert's goal is and what he's doing with it. So We'll just leave that and somewhere. <clears throat> Leela, Macy's being bought out. Yeah, Macy's is, is going to go from like department store to more boutique. I think their goal, like in an economic recession, you either want to go super discount or you want to go high flutin. And I think their goal is to become high flutin boutique uh, and, and like cutting their stores up, making them smaller and then leasing out space in their storefronts or their boxes, whatever they're the mall anchor tenants, those things. Um, and, uh, go from there when the economy collapsed into Oh nine boutique high end stores still did really well. Cause rich people just don't care. They aren't going to go to Sears. They're not going to go to Kmart. They're not going to go to Walmart. They're going to go to where the best things are sold and just buy them because they don't give a shit. They're making $50,000 a day on their investments. They don't care what the price of a pillow is. They just want the best pillow and just buy it and move on because it's a drop in the bucket to them. Um, so that's where, I think that's where, that's where Macy's is going to be heading on that one. I'm in the mood for lurker fishing today. <laughs> Doobie Wall went fishing today, caught four bass. Nice. I did not go fishing today. I caught nothing. Jack Clifford, are we talking about GME and its upcoming earnings call? We can. Uh, it's in three weeks, three-ish weeks. And uh, I think it's going to be good. There, we talked about it. Doobie Wall, I'm a lifetime lurker and I don't get shit. <laughs> and just Stuart Houston going to get any ski days in this season? Ain't looking good for me, unfortunately. Um, we finally just got snow this week, so heading up might be good. I'm going to see if Gardner wants to go to Whistler. I still have a couple lift tickets for Whistler for this year because I accidentally bought them last year thinking I was buying tickets for last year and then I had to buy tickets again for last year. So I bought lots of tickets. Um, but yeah, we're going to try, I'm going to try and get up there probably maybe end of March, take a weekend, head up there. Yogi 2012, do you think that lawsuit could generate an MMAT share count and show a judge massive short position? I don't know. I think they'll just pay out according to how many shares exist. And that's that. Because uh, the PIL of 1.5 cents a share is nothing for the hedge funds. They don't care. So they'll just pay the PIL and move on with their lives. And that'll be that. I don't, I don't think the lawsuit did anyone any good except for the lawyers. It, like, who the hell settled for that much? Why they bother suing the company itself? Why didn't they sue, you know, short players? Why, like, 
why was and Matt having to defend themselves on this in the first place. I don't get it. I don't even know what they were arguing. <clears throat> Turkish Houston should ask the lawyers about the money. Where's the money, Lebowski? Where is it? Person no name. Hello, Houston. No labs making my portfolio happy. They're 80 something cents today, right? 90 cents. Holy moly. They got up to 92 today. So they're getting almost to that dollar range they need to be. Case Chapman, give Monkey a nuggie for me. Oh, Case Chapman, you wanted such an early nuggie. Such an early nuggie. Um, okay. <laughs> Can you get it? Can you get it? It's right there. It's right there. Can you get it? Can you get it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. one stinky beef. Okay. I should have a nuggy cam. I need to do that. I need to make a nuggy cam so that this camera is like super huge. Wait, let's see if I can do that really quick. I can go. Uh, oh, I can't. I do have a Wait, I do have one. No, that's not. Nope. That's not it. That's me large. What if I double click that? I go to that. Nope, that didn't work. It just turned black. Uh, it, what what happened? <laughs> what just what what happened there? I don't understand what happened. How oh, if I close you? Can I delete that entirely? Yes, we're gonna delete that. We're gonna have nice dark blackness because that's what everyone wants to see. They want to see nothing at all. Uh, video capture device, add source, monkey butt cam. That's what we want to add. Okay, add source, bam. Monkey butt cam large. Okay, you ready? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hold still, you gotta get it, you gotta get it. Nope, 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 wait, wait, wait. Hold still, stay. Okay, big jaws cam. Arr. Okay. Wait, what the hell happened there? How come I disappeared? What the? Main cam. Come on. No. There we go. All right. Goodness gracious. <sighs> Thought I was gone for a second. Okay. Cameron Mirza. Tesla to settle a lawsuit over mishandling hazardous waste in California. I wonder how much it's going to cost him. Uh, Tesla hazardous waste lawsuit, California. 1.5 million? That's it. 25 California counties, including electric vehicle mis mishandling hazardous waste facilities across the state. Ooh. $1.5 million. I'm sure that will pay enough for them to, I don't know, spray paint. This is toxic at four locations. Investigators digging through Tesla's trash discovered hazardous waste violations at more than 100 facilities. Allegations Tesla mishandled, mishandled hazardous waste point to a systemic failure of the company's California facilities. This is no simple accident or one-off event. No less than 25 counties sued. 
Uh, let Degree pay $1.5 million to settle the suit. That's such a, 25 county, counties are going to split $1.5 million. Uh, it's pretty egregious. Then why only $1.5 million? Like, what do you get out of this? Lead and acid dispose of improperly. The lead was known to vaporize and get into the air. Uh... Huh. Seems like such weak sauce. GM paid seven hundred and seventy three million when they illegally dumped stuff. So why on earth is Tesla paying one point five million? People, why? Why do they settle for something so puny? Joseph Lee, when will Citadel be liquidated? And have you seen their assets versus securities now you purchase? Yeah, they've got they're gonna be like a a one point five billion dollar uh, disparity between their claimed assets and the securities sold, not yet delivered, which is silly, absolutely silly. Leave Elon Elon alone and pay no attention to the banks who lent money for Twitter. Uh, <laughs> That means Julio wants me to talk about how the banks who are stuck with holding the bonds for Twitter are desperate and trying to figure out a way to get their money back because it doesn't look like they are. Um, Twitter lost $38 billion in valuation in the first six months of Elon owning it. So it went from $44 billion down to $6 billion. And my guess is worth a lot less than that. You can just tell by the fact that uh, they make about $7 million a quarter off of blue checks. Woo! And they have no advertisement. And uh, it seems that they are posting ads that aren't labeling themselves as ads, which is illegal in a lot of countries. So they may get some fines from European uh, countries for that. Um, and the ads that are posting are like drop shipping scam ads. We're like, oh, you can get this really cool, you know, sticky note thing for your car. And they just, you order it, they just order it from Alibaba and cop a dollar off each one. Um, but you aren't going to see, you aren't going to see like, like ads for General Motors or Hilton or, you know, Microsoft on there anymore. They just won't pay for it because they don't want the chance having their product under a racist rant by a complete weirdo blue check. And they're like, yeah, we're just not going to pay you for these ads. We'll, we'll advertise elsewhere where we can guarantee that we're not going to have like that garbage uh, associated with us and Elon's like well screw you man and uh he could easily fix it but he won't because he is I'm pretty sure a white supremacist but you know I mean, he's the son of one he's the grandchild of four <laughs> like seems to be what what he's leaning leaning into there No flavored soda. What happens if you submit your data to get settlement from the MS lawsuit? Does it affect your next bridge shares? I don't think it does. I don't think it affects them at all. I think it just means you're going to get like 10 cents. And then that's it. I don't think it's worth anyone's time or effort. The postage stamp to send you the check is going to be worth more than what you get in return. Ape Ghost Moon Protocol. Houston, what is your hedge against the coming economic hard landing? Uh, meme stocks. And when I feel like it's going to turn like crazy, lots of puts and lots of investment into inverse ETFs. And that is, uh, that's it. I mean, where else can you go? And then hopefully make a little killing off those suckers. Uh, and then take all that invested back in index funds in the spy. As soon as I feel like it's at the bottom and let it climb its way back out again. Rose Day Productions is quantum entanglement between people real. My wife's best friend died Saturday, and about the same time my wife had a cardiac event, uh, uh, same time rushed to the hospital, not a heart attack. Um, I don't know. 
I, I do know, like, I've had my own experiences where someone passed away, and I may have thought about that person for the first time in a long time, and then found out the next day they passed away. I was like, holy crap, I had not talked to them in three years. I had not spoken to them. That could be coincidence. That could be, you know, the woo energy going into the uh, ether. Um, ether does not exist, by the way. Uh, yeah, so... I, I, don't, I don't know. There's, you know, we, we like to associate meaning to coincidence and correlation. And maybe it could just be a random thing or it could be that, you know, the vibes went out into the, went out into the, uh, into space and the universe and your wife received those vibes pretty hard. So, yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to answer that. I have, Go to a sound bath and a yoga retreat in Sonoma, and you might get your answers. <clears throat> Hope your wife's okay, though. That's that's brutal. Not a heart attack, just a, a rough go. <laughs> Richard K., what's Mikey Buck going to do with her MMTOP settlement? Chili and SpaghettiOs is an Ohio thing. Skyline Chili. I heard Skyline Chili is pretty good. What are you going to do with it, buddy? What are you going to do with it, huh? Are you going to go get more nuggies? More nuggies. She needs, she, she, her nuggie intake actually is down overall because not having the car fixed yet means we haven't been taking our normal drives into town so she can stop at all the shops and see her friends and just get fed like crazy with lots of milk bones and nuggets and beef jerky and dried whatever the thingies are that she gets. So her, her she's probably a slim figure right now compared to what she normally would be. Chili and cheese spaghetti in Cincinnati, Ohio staple. All right. Fred Jones, Houston, can you tell me what the deal is with the GME crowd and Matt Furlong? Uh, Matt Furlong was the CEO. He was let go when, about a year ago? Somewhere around there. And Ryan Cohen posted a tweet that said, not for long. So people were planning that's either he was like, Peace out, Matt Furlong. Or uh, he was saying Furlong is not gone for long. So there's speculation that whatever entity, Teddy or G-America, whatever comes out of this BBBY deal, that that Matt Furlong would be on top of that. Uh, I have no idea what he's up to. I don't know if he's updated his LinkedIn or if he's just like hanging with the family and skipping rocks. I have no idea. But uh, I assume we'll find out. Hazel A. Houston, I'm a BBBYQ gal. Do you think we'll ever hear any good news? Yes, I do. I do. I think we'll hear good news, but I think it's going to be on a timeline that's longer than we want it to be, and we will just twiddle our thumbs until then. DRS America Moas, when Sears? Well, hopefully we'll get some answers from uh, Thomas Petterfee. But I think Sears is about two and a half years out still. That's what the plan admin needed for liquidating assets such as uh, real estate. They have something like $8 billion in real estate, uh, which would come out to, you know, like $30 a share or something. Um, then again, they're selling commercial real estate at a period of time when commercial real estate is like losing value. So they should have done this five years ago when commercial real estate still had a lot of value to it, especially warehouses and things. <clears throat> but, you know, twiddle those thumbs. That's all you got to do. Snort alert. Oi, Houston. Thomas Petterfee is still coming on the show Wednesday. He's coming on Thursday. Wednesday is hopefully Rosa, which still not heard from her. Uh, but we'll... Come on, Rosa. Make an hour for us. Ludicrous Speed, have you heard of the shoebill bird in Africa? I just saw an article about it. It looks gnarly. Oh, shoebills are cool, man. They look like cartoon character dinosaur things. Yeah. In any case, I think the class action is all about getting a share count. I believe that uh, maybe how Dole Foods did it. What do I know? I, I don't know why they would sue 
the parent company though. Um, yeah. D looking forward to you and Bruno talking. I'm looking forward to talking to Bruno too. Um, I mean, he's as of late been kind of a, a lightning rod and, uh, I'd like to hear from the horse's mouth as to what's going on. Rosé Productions, dinosaurs can't eat fish. They're dead. <laughs> Gary Klopp, Klopp Castle, some banging wine. We've got Klopp on Klopp wine action here. Is a Cable One. Hello, world. Hello, is a Cable One. Robert Hurt, is there an organization that would support Rosa with what's going on in her life? What's going on in her life? Uh, I think Rosa is the organization <laughs> that's, that's supporting her. Um, she's, she's got a ton of clients. She had, she said she had to stop taking clients cause she just has too many right now and, and can barely handle the workload. Plus she's, uh, uh, doing what she can to, to halt the, the bombing in Gaza cause she's losing family members and friends and all sorts of people. And, uh, you know, she's just, she's just got a lot going on. Plus she's got their own lawsuit that she's hoping will get favorable word from the courts on her appeal and uh you know she's i think she's just running around doing lots of work and uh hopefully not running herself ragged uh Robert Hurt, is there a charitable organization we could that would help support rosa with go, what's going on her with her in her current situation we could do a charity tuesday on I and mean, we can ask her if we can get her on the show david hashemi houston uh, electrical, engin electrical engineering graduate was thinking about studying photonics a aiming to work in transistors chip design I'm backtracking last minute though to work in the power industry it's recession proof I would love to go take some solid state physics courses um, that's the one thing that I, that I really missed out on that I always wanted to do was I want I want to learn how to make circuits and have a better idea of of how to make transistors and chips and just build all that stuff. Uh, so cool. I would love to do that. Uh, but I understand totally going back to work in the power industry because it is recession proof. Like everyone needs power no matter what's going on. It's not like all of a sudden like, well, people aren't requesting enough power anymore. So uh, we're gonna have to lay off all these people in power. Uh, no, the it's good, good on you there. Maybe you can do nights, night classes. I have no idea. I'm sure you know, you know a lot of stuff already. David Shemmy and I can move out of California, move out of California, other tech cities, two other tech cities. Have any thoughts? Uh, well, they're building that huge tech plant out in like Wisconsin or Minnesota, right? Um, that cat. What do you think about it? Are you going to make ceramic transistors? I don't know. But where would you like, where would you like to live? That's, I guess that's the question. For me personally, geography is more important than jobs. Like I would rather live in coastal California than Minnesota. So uh, like when I went to college, geography was all I cared about. I wanted at least the ocean and or surfing. And so I turned down scholarships to like Wichita state. <laughs> like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to Kansas. I'm not going to spend a winter in Kansas just to play baseball in the freezing cold for two and a half months. I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, so yeah, I, I would, I would rather play like community college ball in California than play for the greatest team in the entire world in like Houston, Texas. Cause it's just, it's not for me. It's not, I, geography is way more important. So I can't answer that for you. Um, Dan Harris, what's the affiliation between Todd and Judith RC? They're suing him. That's the affiliation. Donna Stazzone, something happened around Thanksgiving Money, 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 sitting and glitching in my account with BBBY. Really? Glitches are, glitches are wild, man. 
There'll be eye color difference is lens flare across the right eye. You can see it in between them too. Ah, well, there you go. You want to leave? Okay. You can just keep yelling at me. And then you can come back in 10 minutes. And yell at me again. Um, all right, 27, we got like an hour. Frozen State Productions, for being a financier, had anyone seen actual trade made by Epstein? Uh, no. No one knew where Epstein's money came from. They could not figure it out. And I'm just remembering now, I forgot to say, uh, I've got uh, uh, Eclipse glasses to send out to everyone. Um, so send your self-addressed stamped envelopes to the email, uh, sorry, the post office box in the description below. I will send you the, however many Eclipse glasses you need. Um, I got these two going out to uh, Julio and uh, Peter. And so I'll send those to you. Also, I'm going to try and ship today the uh, Charity Tuesday winnings for 50 Cent Wish uh, to Stephanie L. and SJ. SJ, I don't, I don't know how much it's going to cost me. I'm going to try and fill out the uh, customs form so that you don't have to pay anything when you get it. Because <laughs> I didn't think about that. Like, oh, yeah, they're going to do like whole customs crap. Um, be like 50 cent item from wish and then maybe you'll have to pay like a penny, but, um, yeah, send that out. We're gonna send that out today. But yeah, no, I don't think anyone saw any trades made by Epstein. I think Epstein just sort of accrued cash and he probably put that sucker into, and probably had some other financial advisor just do things with it. But I don't think he ever actually did anything. He just suddenly went to go work, live, live with the guy who owned Victoria's Secret, lived in his like mansion in Ohio, and then appeared three years later, rich as fuck. And all of a sudden was a socialite in New York and Miami Beach and whatnot, uh, Palm Beach. And yeah, I, th I think he made all his money off of blackmail schemes. I think that's it. I've been reading about what's the Puff Daddy. Uh, Sean Combs blackmail schemes. It seems to run very similar that they force someone to do something they don't, they don't want to do, or they, if they do want to do it, but they want to keep it hidden and then they just blackmail them and make them do things for them and give them money. And yeah. So that seems to be par for the course on that. Uh... Okay. Bo. Five days in Hawaii, main island only. What is must do? So you're in the big island? Because some people say main island would be Oahu because that's where all the people live. But the big island is the bigger island. You got five days there. Um, Waipio Valley. Go see some lava at Kilauea. Uh, go to the top of Mauna Kea and get a tour of telescopes. Um, hit like Hapuna Beach. And. Eat at White Guava and Hilo at my friend Dean's restaurant. Those are the things that you should do. And I'm sure you'll find other stuff to do. There, you know, you can do like the zip line things and go ride horses and, you know, but sitting on a beach is good. Jumping off a cliff up next to a waterfall into a big old pool of water. That's also good. Uh, going to South Point. My favorite place in the entire world is South Point. Go jump off the cliffs in South Point, swim around. That's uh, That's a must do as well. A dog, if Craig Wright wins his case in the middle of this month, BTC will probably stop trading and crash like no other. I have no idea. Craig Wright. Uh, Wright's claims of being Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, were met with skepticism and labeled a brazen lie by Copa's legal team. The focal point of the dispute centered around the copyright of the Bitcoin white paper and the intellectual property rights associated with the Bitcoin. Oh, okay. Oh, he's that, he's that weird guy that's claiming that he created Bitcoin, but then apparently doesn't know how any of it works. Is that right? Right. My face cross examination again on Friday. Let's see what's happening here. He said to retake the stand Friday to defend allegations initially made by his former lawyers that their correspondence submitted to court had been doctored. 
Craig Wright may face cross-examination Friday in the ongoing trial scrutinizing his claims of having invented Bitcoin. He is set to defend new allegations that emails intended to be shared in court were doctored. All witnesses in a UK trial challenging Australian computer scientist Craig Wright's claims of inventing popular cryptocurrency Bitcoin are through testifying save for potential return appearance by Wright to defend his emails former lawyers have alleged were faked. Although Wright went through cross-examination for several days during the weeks-long trial, which began on February 5th, he'll likely take the stand again on Friday, Friday morning, to defend new allegations, along with digital forensics expert Patrick Madden from the plaintiff's side. The trial stemming from lawsuit brought stemming from a lawsuit brought by Alliance by an alliance of crypto industry heavyweights and developers could decide if Wright's claims of being Bitcoin's pseudonymous inventor Satoshi Nakamoto hold true. The plaintiff, uh, the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, COPA, hopes the trial's outcome, should it confirm Wright is not Satoshi, would end his legal battles with the broader crypto community working on Bitcoin. After Wright made a reference last week to some emails between him and his former legal representatives at, at Ontier, uh, his current lawyers were compelled to submit those emails to evidence an inconsistency forced them to check with Ontier for the accuracy of the correspondence submitted by Wright's wife, Ramona Watts. Ontier then responded the emails appeared to be not genuine. COPA is set to put the new allegations of forgery to Wright on Friday. Counsel for both COPA and Wright this week tried to undermine expert witnesses for the part, other party, uh, particularly questioning their indifference. Uh, Wright's team on Monday questioned COPA expert witness Patrick Madden on why he enlisted the help of COPA's counsel at Bird and Bird LLP to organize the findings of his investigation into Wright's claims instead of seeking independent help. On Wednesday, COPA camp in turn asked Wright's expert witness Ziming Gao, uh, who has authored multiple essays asserting Wright as Satoshi, whether he was truly an objective expert. In addition to Gao, cryptography and security expert Sarah Michael John uh, took the stand for COPA on Wednesday to defend, among other things, her finding indicating her cryptographic signings Wright did as proof he's Satoshi may have been inadequate. Well, wow, sounds like a whole bunch of he said, she said there, but uh, faking the email correspondence, that's probably going to screw you over big time. My, you know, my opinion. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Snort alert. Oh, Houston. Regarding Thomas Pettifee, I watched the first three minutes now. Thanks. All right. Uh, Robert Hurt, is there a website where we can buy a cheap commercial real estate? Sometimes on Bid for Assets, it pops up. Uh, let's see if they've started having any commercial real estate coming up here. Bank owned property. That's probably what we want. No, they got no bank owned properties at the moment. Really? Huh. Categories, real estate. Oh, maybe if we want. Okay, real estate auctions. These all look like houses. Uh, type, land, single family, single land, 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 finance, finance. Land, land, land. Can I do, can I take that? Hmm, bank owned. Yeah, bank owned, they got nothing. This bank owned at the moment popping up on here. Where do I do? I never thought about. Ah, uh, I don't know. Foreclosed commercial properties, 10x official site. Sponsored, so who knows? Keep track of all your opportunities at 10x account. Blah blah blah. Oh, here we go. Looks like uh, a lot of commercial properties on 10x. Get yourself a Hyatt. Rogers, Arkansas. Or is it Rogers? Yeah, Rogers, Rogers, Arkansas. For two million bucks, you get on a Hyatt. You can landmark office tower in, in uh, Baltimore for four million. Get a coastal office asset in Naples for 750K. There you go. Medical room. You get a Hampton Inn in Muskegon. Muskegon. Musk, how do you say that? Muskegon. Michigan for two million. All right, we do property type. Let's do office. Okay, got any towers? Who who's the one on a tower? Here we go. Eight hundred thousand dollars for Seattle, Washington. Right, by six percent buyer broken commit. Ooh, which building is this? That is condo. Is it this building or is it that building? 
you know, 9,000 square feet, total building size 51,000. Oh, it's just a single condo. Well, that's, that's not exciting. I was hoping like, you know, something gnarly. We go a tower in Baltimore, 4 million. We just did that one. A uh, small tower in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Got a tower in Minneapolis. Uh, 950,000. Galleria Corporate Center, full floor. Full floor in office building. I mean, in the right office building, full floors go for like 30,000 a month. I an office condo. 10 Fortune Park, 95% occupied, $3 million. That's a fancy looking thing in Indianapolis. Uh, hmm. Well, there you go. 10-x.com. That's that looks like a good spot to do your uh do it. Loopnet commercial foreclosed real estate as well. Oh, got downtown Seattle right there. Camp pickle. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, yeah, search that. Look at those guys. Let's check out those guys. Let's see here. Chad Clifford, Houston, what's your guess on earnings per share for GME? What was it last year? It was like, I think they beat it by like 60 cents, but I think it was like 30 cents per share. Uh, GME Q4 2022 earnings. Uh, so they had 16 cents a share in 2022. I'm leaning towards between 50 cents and a dollar. I know it's a, it's a big hype on my point, on my, on my part, but I think, I think that they've been sort of juking the stats for the previous three quarters in order to really just hammer home a hell of earnings for quarter four. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be more 16 cents last year. They were projected to have a loss of like 60 cents or something ridiculous like that. And they ended up just crushing the earnings. So. Yeah. I mean, they had, they had a gross profit last year of 499 million, almost $500 million. So that's, that's the type of money you can start doing a 25 cent per quarter uh, dividend on. And not hurt. I'd say do it. Um, I know your friend Aloha from Wahoo. We've been doing chili and spaghetti for a while now. Ever been to Zippy's? Post Moas goals for you. I've never been to Zippy's. So uh, I take it to the Wahoo place. Peachy Sunday, what's happening in BTC Houston? Is it going to 100K and then collapsing? I I have no clue. Um, I don't know who's buying right now. Is it the is the ETF still buying? I thought they had finished their buying, but it looks like they're still buying. And why would you even bother investing in ETF when you can just get the coin itself? I don't get it. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I know it's got incredible volatility. I know the bottom's going to fall out of it because that's what it does. It hit 69,000 last time and then whoosh, dropped to 15. So if only I could buy puts on BTC, right, monkey? Hey, monkey butt. <laughs> She's still eyeballing the, uh, the nuggies out there. Jason5327, are you my mother? Maybe. <laughs> Fred Jones, is there a website to opt out of the MMAT lawsuit? There was one. I don't have the link for it. It's something like mmatlawsuit.com or something. Uh, there's links to it that people have posted to the subreddit and others. Robert Hurt. Hater went to Astros. Looks like Astros, Rangers, and World Series again. Very likely. Unless, unless... The Mariners have zero injuries this year. If the Mariners have zero injuries this year. They're going to be pretty good. But they have a whole bunch of people made of uh, porcelain. 
and I'm not quite so sure that they'll be able to go an entire season. I mean, Matt Brash is out. He might be out for a long time, and he was like the, the premier setup man in all of baseball. He, the gnarliest slider, perhaps in baseball history. Uh, but he's he's got arm problems, and he's out for an indeterminate amount of time. It might be the entire season. So there's already uh, chinks in the armor forming for the Mariners right there. Um, but I don't like most of the players they picked up have can't play a full season because they usually get injured in somewhere in there. So I do think Astros or Rangers for the AL. Yeah. Probably make another world series, uh, NL Atlanta or LA. Those guys are juggernauts. Although Atlanta did also had some uh, injury bugs happen here in, in spring training already. And Kellenick, who I'm pretty sure will turn into a stud in the middle of that Atlanta lineup, uh, hasn't done much in spring training so far. He's been pretty weak sauce. So maybe he's inside his own head. Hot Pocket Rebel told my wife I can make a bicycle out of spaghetti. She have seen her face when I rode pasta. Ah, I need to start charging for those. Robert Hurt, Seattle starting a rookie that could win the strikeout title. On which side? Hitting or pitching? <laughs> Hot Pocket, does Jimmy have an earning date announced for quarter four yet? Want to gamble and buy more options? Uh, I think unofficially it's the 27th. So let's see here. GME for earnings call date. Um, GameStop releases next earnings report March 27th, 2024 in the last quarter. Um, it looks like March 27th. Wait, no. This market beat says it'll be Tuesday, March 19th. Uh, Zach's investment researcher also says 19th. Yeah, let me know, man. What's what's it going to be? So, no, I don't think anything official has come out from, from GME on that one yet. No, I don't know. Nine, one, one, several websites say the 19th, several websites say the 27th. Uh, I need to know because I'm going to have to make you know, my own options place. See what's going on. Robert was just looking uh, at that. Better to get one at 126 close to the money or wait till the 19th. Mm, I'm probably going to make my play the Friday before earnings, whichever that is. Uh, cause there's going to be lots of, lots of, uh, IV, the implied volatility, which is going to cause the price to go up. So I'm going to wait for theta decay and I'm going to do weeklies and, and, and be a degenerate gambler in that, in that respect. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm, and I'm looking at five to seven out of the money somewhere in there. Uh, cause if it goes up 10 bucks, I can do three to $500 off each one of those. And get them pretty cheap, so I can get a lot of them. Uh, that's where I'm leaning. And if I miss out, then I miss out, and that's that. Uh, so I know going in full, full well that that it is a complete lotto ticket play, counting on the fact that they had fantastic earnings last year for quarter four, and that they'll do it again for this quarter. They've been kind of gaming the system to set it up for that. So that's that's what I'm leaning towards. Oh, there's a reset of the chat. Dang it. Uh, Hot Pocket Rebel. Big week for no labs. Ron is getting ready to show off that sexy new device at the lunch in Italy. What's your cost basis if you don't mind me asking, Houston? I'm at like 75 cents, somewhere around there. I should have bought more last fall uh, when it was like down to 25 cents, but I didn't have any ammo at the time. I wish I had gotten more, but yeah, I'm, I'm around there. Lunar Swine, Houston, have you ever read Dos Capital by Karl Marx? If so, thoughts? Yes, I've read it. Um, 
my biggest beef with Marx is that Marx does not take into account the fact we have a significant portion of the population who are born with untreatable cluster B personality disorders. Narcissists, sociopaths, and psychopaths. And his utopian ideal is that, hey, if all the workers band together, we can easily handle this thing. But the problem is, is that the people who gravitate towards the top of leadership are often complete psychos. And they will game the system for themselves in a way that will be the detriment of all of society. And uh, they've got no checks and balances to take care of that. So that's my biggest beef with with communism. Like if everybody can be voluntarily in a commune and do that stuff, cool. Uh, the minute you make it involuntary, uh, you're going to have the bad people rise to the top because there's nowhere else for them to go because they don't have like businesses to get to the top of. They're going to be like, well, the only system in place is this communist structure. So if I want to live the good life, I've got to be in charge of the communist structure to guarantee that I'm going to have the good life. And that's what they will do. And they will game that system and take full advantage of it. And Marx never considered that ever. Uh, Utopias are impossible because people got broken brains. And smart people with those broken brains figure out ways to game the system for themselves. And that's my, that's my biggest beef with, with uh, Marx. I would love, I would love for us to all get along and, you know, stick it to the man, have high quality of life. But the man always ends up on top no matter what system you have. So you need to lease a system with checks and balances. And what's happening with America right now, we used to have strong checks and balances. We used to have great antitrust legislation. We used to have fan great financial regulations. And we've eroded all of that. So now we are going towards the opposite end where the business people control way too much and there's not enough power in the government to, do, to be the check and checks and balances on the psychopaths. And now the psychopaths have, you know, giant banks, and giant corporations and giant everything else when they just need to get smashed into a thousand pieces, just spread thin. That's what we need to do. I would, I would say, uh, you know, there's lots of laws you can, you can enact. They can be checks and balances on the psychopaths without directly being like, fuck you. Um, like, let's say. If uh, the CEO makes more than, I don't know, 150x the lowest paid employee, right? If they make more than 150x the lowest paid employee, uh, you can't do stock buybacks. You cannot give away equity to um, uh, uh, executives as foreign payment. And you cannot have tax breaks on your corporation. Oh, for any reason you can't like, let's say you're Exxon mobile, right? And your lowest paid employee makes $30,000 a year and your CEO is making a hundred million, right? Um, Exxon would not be allowed to take any money from the U S government as form of, uh, but right now they get like $35 billion in, in, uh, aid because they really, they really need the aid. Right. Um, and they would not like just, you just make it say, Hey, you either pay your lowest employees more or pay your executives less pick one. Right. <laughs> and if, and if all of a sudden you, you made it so that the, the guy who running Exxon is only making, you know, a million dollars a year, which is more than enough for somebody to be an executive of a company and live a comfortable life. Uh, you might start having more quality people apply for the job than the complete psycho nut jobs that seem to run companies like that. I don't know. It's, there's a lot of things we could do. It would be analogous to like the Retail Investor Protection Act. Ripa. Robert Hurtless buy Tesla's power and rediscover free power. Wouldn't that be great? Not Tesla, the car company, but Tesla, the Nikola Tesla. Robert Armstrong is here. David Hashemi. I want to buy a piece of land. Ideally, I'm not sure which state yet. I want to build some house for some houses for my old parents. Uh, grow some food, tend to some cows. Well, that's a far cry from electrical engineering. Um, I commend it. I have no desire to grow my own food or tend to some cows. I'll gladly let somebody else tend to some cows on some land I have. Like, have at it. Because cows are hilarious. But uh, I don't want to be responsible for anything. 
Lewis Wine, Houston. I finally read Stranger in a Strange Land. It was fantastic. Uh, then I read Time Enough for Love, Total Dog Shit. <laughs> uh, Heinlein, when Heinlein got older, he got kind of lazy and was much more interested in like writing three ways into his books than like cool sci-fi. Uh, I think the turning point was probably Friday. Every book after Friday was like, eh. Friday was like half and eh, half cool and then everything else. Um, but no, Stranger Strange Land, I think, is one of the best books ever written. It is phenomenal. And I think it's the type of book that should be required reading uh, for people in college or something. It's just a good, good book. It's a factory. Ether does not exist, by the way. That's what Big Ether wants us to think. <laughs> <clears throat> Lunar Swine, Epstein was a Mossad agent. That's where the money came from. That's also been a theory bandied about. But I, I think he was just blackmailing people. I think he just had parties, traffic girls in there, rich old men would bang little girls, and he would film it, and then he'd blackmail them into paying him lots of money. Otherwise, it would go to public. And that's where it would go. Uh, Gazelle Maxwell's dad was a very famous, notable Mossad agent. That's what I heard as well. So, yeah. Rosé Productions, Petrofi, uh told me today that Sears is coming back, but not how people expect. I worked in Sears in the past. I'd, yeah, if it comes back, it's going to be completely different than what it was. Brandon T. Houston starting to do taxes in Canada. Quest, Quest Trade tax statement is putting my BB Boy shares as actually sold for $0. Well, what the hell? Not claiming the loss of my taxes so I can argue later. Yeah, uh, I, I would call Quest Trade and be like, I never sold this stuff, dude. I never sold. So I mean, you can always, I don't know about Canadian, but like in the US, you can always claim later if you need to. Uh, oh, shoot. I missed a, I missed a super chat from Case Chapman. I'm trying to figure out if BBBY needs to file a 10K. Their bonds are trading, so they are legally required to, but are they exempt from reporting obligations because they've gone dark and thoughts? I think they're exempt in the gone dark stage. Until they've officially like reorganized and come up, uh, they don't have to do that, I think. Don't quote me on it, but I think I think you're right. I think it has to do with the Gone Dark, that they don't have to file that stuff. So. Julio gets to five memberships. Tyler Lueck. Cali Bowl got one. Right, look at that. Uh, Logic Dustbin, Justin Walden, Bob. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, way to go. Way to go. All right. 325. I got 35 minutes. Brandon T. Oh, death taxes one. We did that. Uh, Robert Hurt can take a five minute break. Dogs need to pee. Well, just turn the volume up and head on out. Lunar Swan, Houston, you say that uh, that's your beef with Marx, but you just described our capitalist government. Why and how do you think these rich people got control of the levers? Uh, it's all by design. Well, they've been gaming the system a lot more than they used to in the past. Uh, and it's been, a, it's been a slow erosion since, basically since FDR. Uh, we used to have a 90% tax rate on anyone making $400,000 a year or more. Meaning, you made $400,000 a year in 1951, you were pretty rich. You were doing very well. You know, a house cost $6,000. A car cost $2,000. You're making good money. It's equivalent to about $13 million today. Uh, but if you made $400,001, that $1 was taxed at 90%. If it was $500,000, that extra $100,000 was taxed at 90%. So you're, you're paying $90,000 in taxes and getting 10 back. And what, what, that did was it created the really, really huge charitable foundations we have today. Think of the Catherine T. and John B. MacArthur Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation. Like these huge foundations were created because of that gigantic tax rate. Like, well, shit, I should take all this money and at least put it into a charity or something. And uh, starting in the 60s, we started eroding that. We started chopping away at the tax rate. And it got chopped way down during the Reagan era. So that rich folks uh, were all of a sudden paying 
you know, a very small portion of their income, what they used to pay back in the past. And that's when we started, you know, having massive debts, uh, having crazy inflation happen. Like these are, these are the things that, that, that not equalizing the playing field does. Now, the Great Depression would have been a catalyst for a communist revolution in the United States had John Maynard Keynes not introduced Keynesian economics. In Keynesian economics, you know, a lot of people talk about quantitative easing, quantitative tightening, but it's not just that. It's not just like, oh, we're going to tweak this interest rate here and there, which is what the, you know, Masters of the Universe want you to think it is. It is also massive spending during recession to get people to work and uh and then reinvesting uh when times are good so you do you don't want to do austerity like what poor greece went through a few years ago uh, during the financial crisis and all their money they owed to owed to uh germany and whatnot like cutting back on federal spending does not make the economy improve it makes things worse uh the u.s government is the largest uh member of the economy and their infrastructure projects, military projects, their, you know, safety projects, the amount of people they have, like their purchasing power is greater than any entity on earth. And so when you talk about like, oh, we need to cut spending, that doesn't do any good for anybody because you want the velocity of capital moving through the economy as fast as you can. Because capital is the movement of goods, people, services, information, right? You got, you got to move, got to move that stuff around on capital too, like cash. So you, as long as you're moving that stuff as easily as possible, your economy generally is going to do well. And if you hurt the movement of that stuff, such as throttling the internet, which is what uh, uh, that dick bag who was in charge of the SEC wanted to do. What's that guy with the big coffee mugs? I, asshole. Throttling the internet. Terrible. Because that slows down the, the movement of information, slowing down the information, slows down the economy. If you got shitty roads and no trains and terrible airports, you're slowing down the move of goods and people. You don't want to do that either. If your banking system is in crisis because uh, you have too large big banks and they're too big to fail, but they're all in the process of failing, uh, then you have a problem with moving the the, the cash capital around. Um, so what Keynes saw was when, thing, when the economy is constricting, you have to artificially boost it. You have to do that through debt spending. You have to spend, you have deficit spend and get people working. And that's why you saw things like... The, uh, public works programs and w wpa and, and and stuff like that during during the great depression was like hey uh no one has work so we're just gonna hire you and you're gonna build trails and lodges and dams and you're just gonna paint murals we're just gonna put people to busy work and these wpa projects are some beautiful absolute legacies that at the time had no economic benefit other than to just get people working. So they would earn a paycheck, spend money, and make the flow of capital improve. Uh, so that, I think John Maynard Keynes saved us from a communist revolution in the United States uh, because it was a check on the capitalist structure. It allowed for an outlet for greedy assholes to be able to benefit in some fashion. Uh, and if they didn't have that outlet, then in the communist system, they would just rise to the top and subjugate everybody. And that would be, we'd be like the Soviet Union or communist China or any other communist state in that, in that regard. Uh, you, that's why I feel like the, uh, how to put this monkey, like the, the best way to do a check and balance on the cluster B personality disorders is like a social democracy where you make sure people's necessities are taken care of. Think of your Swedens and Norways and Denmarks, right? Uh, 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 housing's taken care of, food's taken care of. Uh, there is incentive to like live a better life and enjoy your vacations and have your pensions and whatnot, but you don't have to spend your time struggling to get there. Uh, and I think too much in the United States, we have too large a popu of, of the population that are struggling at all times. And I don't think the rich people quite realize that when everyone does well, they do even better. They seem to think like, oh, if I can just take from all these poor people, then I've got it all and I can make them do what I want. And in reality, if those 
poor people became middle class people and had a larger portion of income that was discretionary income, more money would go to the top. Those rich people would be wealthier because more of them would be able to invest, more of them would be able to, to, to spend on vacations and cars and, you know, fingernails or whatever it is they're doing. Uh, and so you can, you can have a few at the top who are like super powerful and rich, but you know, they're just going to get assassinated in the end. And then you're gonna have the revolution. Uh, or you can like have everybody live comfortably and happily and crime rates go down. You don't need to invest so much in police or prisons and more people going to college and I don't know, but we have strayed too far from the regulations that are put in place during the great depression to ensure that another great depression didn't happen, that we're going to have another great depression. Uh, the glass Steagall act, like the two things that, that Clinton did that I think are unforgivable, getting rid of glass Steagall and the 1996 telecommunications act. So the 1996 telecommunications act limited a single entity to owning basically eight media outlets, whether it's newspaper, television, stations, radio stations, whatever. They could only own so many in a single market, and then they had to go outside a market to own their other ones. Um, and when he got rid of that, they made ownership of local media unlimited. So all of a sudden you had these huge news services like Gannett and whatnot, Tribune, who own all of a sudden a thousand newspapers across the country. And when you own a thousand newspapers across the country, your incentive is not, let's provide news for these local people. It's how do I cut costs? I know I will get rid of all the local reporters and we'll just have like one guy who writes some pieces and then we'll just syndicate it to everybody. So we don't have people going to the, going to the city council meetings anymore, the school board meetings anymore, like hearing what the park district is doing or covering local sports. Like it's gone because it's, it's expensive. So why would we pay for that? We want greater overhead or to, lo to lower overhead and have, have more profit per, you know, uh, uh, subscription. The problem is, is that when, when you start providing a bad product because people aren't getting the local news they want, they stop subscribing. And so then all the newspapers start going under and like, well, shit. And so all these big newspaper companies that gobbled and gobbled and gobbled and gobbled, they're now worth less than they were when they just had like a couple of good newspapers and that was it. Um, you got like... Jack FM, right? And iHeart Radio and Clear Channel and crap. And they own 2,000 radio stations across the country. And it's now just like a robot that plays the greatest hits of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And that's it. They don't, they don't have local bands that get featured. They don't have an actual DJ in studio in that city talking about local stuff. And it's, it's just a cookie cutter that's across the entire country. So we're losing out. We're losing... We're losing like regional uh, identity as a result. Um, we are we are making it almost impossible for up and coming bands to get breaks on these radios radio stations. Um, we don't have local news anymore, and a lot of them like like uh, Sinclair are just straight up evil. You know, Sinclair bought up a thousand television stations across the country, and now they basically have like, hey every news broadcast we're, we're going to talk about something that's a little fascist and we're going to get you angry so that you want to be a fascist too and that's what they do at the Sinclair they are a fascist owned piece of shit company here in Seattle Coma 4 News are owned by Sinclair and they have some evil fucking news stories to make people really pissed off and be like you know what I'm going to do I'm going to go kill homeless people because that will solve our problems and that's the stuff they try to rile up in every single solitary station that they own across the country these have the boris epstein you know i'm an evil russian agent moment at the end of each show every single day like we have to you have to have boris epstein for a couple minutes then it was revealed that boris you know uh probably should be in prison and then all of a sudden he just kind of disappeared um and then you know outside of the 1996 telecommunications act which just eroded everything and made these giant media companies and while destroying all the independent ones and local ones, uh, there's the glass Steagall act. The glass Steagall act basically was if your money gets deposited into a bank, the bank cannot use that money to play the stock market because that's what collapsed the economy in 1929 was everyone's deposits, their banks were used to gamble in the stock market, stock market collapsed, banks went under, no one had any money. So they said, banks, you cannot play the stock market. In 1989, 
They got rid of that. And all of a sudden the banks could play a stock market again. And we went from the 1930s when Glass-Steagall was created all the way into the 2000s and never had to bail out banks. Never had to do it because Glass-Steagall made it so the banks weren't collapsing in the ways that they otherwise would have, save for the savings and loan scandals, but that was a whole different thing. All of a sudden, since the repeal of Glass-Steagall 25 years ago, we have banks getting bailed out fucking daily, <laughs> right? Because they cannot be trusted with their client's money because they're going to take that money and then go, come on, baby needs a pair of shoes, bring, and then gamble it into the market and then they're going to go under, which is what we're seeing happen everywhere. So wait for these crazy bailout term bailout programs and too big to fails and everything else. Uh, so like you, you, you can point to the, to the sort of uh, neocon um, neoliberal, they're both very similar uh, uh, workings of a cynical Clinton administration, basically creating the situation we have now, which got compounded by the Bush administration, making it so that, you know, uh, uh, Adjust rate mortgages could be an infinite amount of the market. Uh, and, you know, people just, and, and, and basically cutting away at our ability to, to antitrust monopolies. Uh, the inshittification of this nation is a juggernaut and everything's going to get worse. Fucking daily. You know, the internet is going to be a worse experience every day because all of a sudden, we're going to see just heaps of AI crap popping up in everyone's timelines, spouting gobbledygook, and people are just going to be like zombies watching it. There's going to be no human interaction. There's going to be no fact checking behind it. There's going to be no skill. It's just going to be like, I don't know, shades of beige is what's going to be our entertainment uh, uh, source and our news sources. And I don't, and I, I honestly don't have much hope that <laughs> things will get better at this point. We're just going to be AIing ourselves around in our little floaty chairs, like in uh, Wally, getting bigger and dumber. And uh, yeah, anyways, the communist system has no solution for that. Uh, the communist system is let's just crush everything. We own, you know, we have a centrally uh, uh, managed economy. Well, if you have a centrally managed economy, you don't have a way to respond to, to market forces. So there's a famous story about, you know, the five-year plans in the Soviet Union. Like, we've got this, we got to make this many television sets, this many radios, this many things. And then somebody didn't think about like, making toothbrushes. So no toothbrushes got made for five years and everyone ran out of toothbrushes. Because there's no market force be like, hey, there's demand for toothbrushes. Let's make some toothbrushes. Because it wasn't part of the central plan. And if you got left out of the central plan, it just didn't get made. Right? So, you know, and then you got like China, which China went from a totalitarian, repressive communist state into a totalitarian, laissez-faire uh, capitalist state. China is the purest system of capitalism in the entire world. It is completely right. no worker regulations, no child labor regulations, no uh, environmental regulations. There's no safety precautions. There's just nothing. You can produce whatever you want. Live, let live. Uh, c'est la vie. And, you know, if China was a communist country, there would be no billionaires and there would be no poor people. But there are quite a lot of billionaires and way too many poor people in China because they are not communists. They're communists in name only, but really the factory owners, the, the, the oligarchs, they just have, they're just members of the communist party and that's it. And they're just led by a dictator. Um, so there's, the, the psychopaths always get to the top. You just need, you need to have a system in place to safeguard the people at the bottom and to make it so that their quality of life can still exist and a way to have some checks and balances against the assholes who will rise to the top. And that usually involves putting them in handcuffs and throwing their asses in prison. And if we start making it impossible to put those people in handcuffs and throw their ass in prison when they cross the line, then this nation would be no better off than than communist China in that regard. So, yeah, take a swig. There's a lot of yik yakking.
Notice why he never actually talked about capital itself, just your idea of Marxism generally. Um, all right. So Marx basically said that in order to achieve this, this utopian communist society, right, that you have to be a fully developed industrialized capitalist system first. Like you have to have lights in every home, roads, industrial capacity, all these things. Nowhere on earth has a nation attempted a communist state that has been industrialized first. Basically, it was farmers with pitchforks being like, communism, and they would overtake in a revolution, and then they would have no industrial industrial capacity. That happened in Russia. They had to industrialize themselves after uh, the revolution because they were agrarian society. Happened in China. They were agrarian. They had to industrialize themselves after they became a communist state. And without having the legacy or know-how of how to make factories and how to make an industrialized society and how to provide the infrastructure that's needed, you're going to do it really shitty. And that's what happened for 50 years. They did. They had shitty, 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 shitty version of industrialization. And even today, they still have a pretty shitty industrialization that is, you know, uh, 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 cut corners at all costs, which is a very capitalist ideal, but at least in, a modern capitalist system, you've got some sort of recourse when like you poison children with their baby formula, right? That the factory gets shut down and investigations happen and they fix it and whatever. In China, you don't have that because the state makes money either way. They don't care. And they don't actually care about the people. Caring about the people is a very, very, very important part to make a, uh, a, a communist system work. And at no point has a communist nation cared about its people. They throw them into gulags, they work them like slaves, they starve them, they, you know, have their own pogroms, and, and the people at the top, they always do A-OK, right? Uh, Stalin killed 100 million people, right? 60 million died of starvation during the Chinese famine. And why they died of Chinese, died of the Chinese famine? It's not like they didn't make enough food, it's that the Chinese government forced the towns to export all their food, and there was none left for the people. Same thing happened with the pogrom in the 1930s in Ukraine was they basically stole all the food from the Ukrainians and starved them to death. And we're like, that's okay. The Ukrainians are not humans. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the capital portion of Das Capital relies upon an educated industrialized society, then becoming one that's owned by the, the means of production are owned by the people. And Nowhere in Russia were the means of production owned by the people. Nowhere in China has the means of production been owned by the people. Nowhere in North Korea are the means of production owned by the people. Nowhere in, in, in Cuba are the means of production owned by the people. Nowhere in Venezuela are the means of production owned by the people. The means of production are owned by oligarchs at the top who just give themselves some military uniforms and call themselves communists. It's, it's the same shit, just with a different dude in a different uniform. He's not wearing a business suit. He's just got medals on his chest, right? And uh, it, it's, I personally think that Karl Marx had a great idea that should have been expanded upon, but never had any checks and balances whatsoever to manage whether the people could actually take control of those levers and, and maintain control. Because every single time some psychopath rose to the top and subjugated everyone, just flat out. At least in a system where there's competition, you can have a couple of psychopaths battling each other and then having to like tweak <laughs> their their their, uh, 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 their behavior in order to maximize profit and drive revenue, right? Like right now, we're seeing just what a shitbird Elon Musk is, right? We're seeing that he's not as bright as he thinks he is. He's kind of an asshole that... He's, he's kind of racist that he doesn't actually care about the environment. And we're, we're seeing who he is as a person. And now Tesla and the earnings call are like, we expect car sales to drop, right? Because the folks who would have bought his cars are now like, ew, I don't want to buy his cars. I'll figure out a green vehicle from someone else. And, uh, that's, that's the case. Whereas if we were in a system where we only had Teslas to buy, such as only could buy Lada's. Lottas are pieces of shit. 
And they were the only car available in Russia for 70 years. So you had to buy a Lada. That's all you had. But the minute you had the choice to buy something else, post-1991, people got something else. They're like, fuck this Lada, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to buy this cardboard piece of crap. I'm going to get a Toyota now. And that's what that's, that's exactly what they did. So you need to have some sort of competition. You just do. Yet you have to have markets compete against each other because if you have only one option, then you are just in a monopoly again and people are going to get screwed. And that, that, uh, Mark's never really accounted for any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Lee, do you think RC will still give a possible dividend if BBBY case is still ongoing? Yeah, because GME is separate from BBBY. So they can, they can offer a dividend on GME and, and everything, and that could be completely separate from uh, a possible takeover of Bed Bath & Beyond. Because, I mean, if, they, if, if he does do takeover of Bed Bath & Beyond, does some sort of reverse merger with GME, then all of a sudden they can offer a bigger dividend because they want to pay taxes on any of it for a long time. So good stuff. Chris Taylor shirt is badass. Top 10 for sure. It's a good shirt. This is, it's got pineapples. It's got ladies, it's got martinis and pina coladas or whatever. It's a, it's a good shirt. What is, what is this one? Oh, it's Tiki God. Okay. It's Tiki God. <laughs> Just bam me. The monkey butt cam took up the whole screen for a few minutes. It's true. <laughs> All right. Houston, I read there was an eruption in the Galapagos. Is that relative to the common Galapagos? Yeah, the, Gal the Galapagos are a hotspot volcano, just like Hawaii. Um, bing. Come on. I'm going to leave Pain Field here and head out. So, we got Hawaii, a little hotspot volcano. Uh, the hotspot stays in one spot and the plate moves over it, so the island change keeps progressing to the northwest. And if we go down to the Galapagos, the Galapagos are in a much more stable uh, area of the Pacific where the plates aren't really moving that much. They're moving a little bit towards uh, uh, the subduction zone here. So you can just kind of see the trail of the islands, but they hang out a lot, a lot longer before they erode. And you can tell that they're all, that these are all volcanic. Um, these are all little volcanic islands. You can see a big caldera here. Like, look at this guy. It's a huge caldera in this volcano. Uh, uh, Vulcan Alcedo. Uh, there's lots of volcanic, hotspot volcanic uh, archipelagos like this. You got Hawaii, you got the Galapagos, you've got uh, Canary Island, sorry, Cape Verde Islands here, the Canary Islands up here, uh, uh, the Azores. I've always wanted to go to the Azores uh, just to see big waves, even. Um, you've got uh, uh, like uh, La Reunion. La Reunion is very similar to the Big Island of Hawaii in. in their shield volcano structure and multiple climates and everything. Uh, Mauritius, which is one that's kind of eroded away and isn't, isn't quite as active. Uh, what are some big ones? Other big ones we got uh, out in the South Pacific. We've got um, like Samoa, uh, uh, Tonga, um, uh, Hunga Tonga. We did a, a charity for them. There's a hot spot volcano out here as well. Um, Big eruptions. They happen. They happen all over the place. Hotspots are different than like island arc volcanoes. So Japan is an island arc chain. Uh, Saipan, Guam, that's all part of an island arc chain. Uh, uh, Tahiti, Fiji, uh, Arteroa, that's an island arc chain. Um, the Aleutian Islands, that's all island arc. Uh, the Russo-Japanese Islands, I'm not sure what they want to call them anymore. Those are island arc volcanoes. The Caribbean, so... And when you get volcanic eruptions down here, those are island arcs. That's where two plates are hitting and one subducting and then creating magma chambers that erupt. Um, so they're different, but uh, we do have hot spots around the world. Iceland is a hot spot volcano. So Iceland's a hot spot volcano that also happens to be the seam between the Atlantic and, uh, sorry, the, the Europe and, and, and North America. So there's a conveyor belt coming from the mantle, but also happens to be a hot spot right there as well. So it's got two forms of, vul of volcanism coming up. Uh, one from the conveyor belt coming from the mantle, spreading the two plates apart, and one from a hot spot that's just gurgling out at all times. But yeah, there you go. <clears throat> uh, I 
Uh, punch a tree, FINRA, SEC, next bridge hydrocarbon meetings. That's the rumor. Well, I know FINRA and NextBridge are able to meet. I think they're having a hard time getting the SEC on board. Uh, I've not heard the SEC have replied to anybody yet, but if they have, all right. That's awesome. Um... Artist Shadow, self simple automated chat. I don't know what that means. Uh, mergers and acquisitions do not have any tax implications for existing shareholders of target company and the acquiring company. So you wouldn't have to accept tax loss or BBYQ stock during the merger, merger acquisition process. The problem is, is that they aren't, some, some brokers are not listing it as a merger acquisition for the stock at the moment. They're like, hey, your stock is sold. Uh, others have been like, oh, we sold a penny for the lot. You get nothing. Um, when no one agreed to that. So bad things. Oh, wealth simple automated chatbot response. Ah. <laughs> it's like self simple. It's like chief self? I don't know what that means. Lisa I saw Houston. Any theories why the first attempt to assassinate Alexei Navalny failed? Novichuk nerve agent incompetence, or was it a warning he's on the hit list? I think it was they probably didn't use enough of it. Uh Novichuk seems like it's pretty lethal. But my guess is is that is that uh medical staff caught it fast enough and were able to treat it and they didn't use enough of it. So they got to use more. I mean, like the polonium stuff seems to work better when they poison people with polonium because that just destroys their insides and their radiation poisoning. And there's no bouncing back from that. There's no way to be like neutralize that radiation. Nope. It's everywhere in the system and they're just going to turn to like sludge and that's that. We have H. I'm a few minutes behind, but one of the lines of yours I love is regulations protect businesses and the wealthy just as much as they protect normal people. It's true. Uh, uh, it's it's like so many regulations are in place to make sure that rich assholes don't destroy everything, right? Because if given the chance, they will blow the whole thing up for a few moments of greed with no thought as repercussions of the future. For example, Enron. California deregulated their energy market. What happened? Energy companies took huge advantage of it. Prices went through the roof. Enron entered the market doing this buying and selling of energy bits and eventually racked up so much margin they imploded and disappeared forever. If there had been no deregulation of the energy market in California, energy prices in California would be way cheaper. Uh, and Enron may still exist to this day. But you basically gave them enough rope to hang themselves. Um, having, not having independent regulators at Boeing facilities, making sure that there was quality happening on the planes resulted in Boeing making shitty planes and their stock price crumbling, right? <laughs> like it happens all the time. If you don't have anyone watching on the shoulder, making sure that there's quality involved, then they're going to cut costs, cut quality, and then destroy their companies happens time and time again like you need to make sure that they're doing a good job because they're not going to make sure they're doing a good job especially if they don't have ample competition like you know there's airbus and there's boeing there's two companies on earth that make passenger jets you got some smaller like bombardier makes little little ones and china's trying to make some little ones but they're not making like big cross cross ocean uh jetliners and if there's no competition making sure that they're that they're doing a good job guess what? They're going to start doing a shitty job because what else are you going to buy? Right. Um, so yeah, you, you need, you need to have some regulations in there to make sure that people don't suck because people are going to suck. They do. They're just going to suck, especially if they went to business school, they don't know how to build things. They don't know how to design things. They don't know how to invent or create things. All they can do is like, Oh, you do stock buybacks. And, uh, that's all I know. Right. Whereas if you have engineers running Boeing, Boeing would just be making solid planes year in, year out, and that's what they do, right? But the business people took over, and business people were like, how can I cut costs? I know. I'm going to make shitty planes. And then you make enough shitty planes, people stop wanting to fly your planes, and then no one will buy your planes. And then you're out of business. Done. Right, monkey? That's right. Okay. Um... 
Michael Harrow may be headed to a WPA program again. If so, they should hire people to build the charging stations across country for electric cars. That would be an excellent idea and be able to make the transmission and capacity to be able to handle that stuff. BLH Neolib versus Neocon. One saying I love is if you scratch a liberal, a fascist bleeds. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, NK Houston is, um, Hey, Houston, is Beyond changing their IP to Overstock, or do they have two websites? Two websites. They're going to have Overstock side and the Bed Bath & Beyond side, or just Beyond, because it sounds like they're going to be doing banking and insurance and all sorts of things. So they're becoming a holdings company as well. But yeah, they, they still, there's still a market for something like Overstock, which original plan was, hey, this stuff that couldn't sell is like an online uh, Ross or TJ Maxx, but maybe a little higher end. Like, hey, we got a whole bunch of this furniture on sale because this factory closed or this company went out of business. And now we're going to sell it to you at a discount because we got it for a discount. That was kind of the original Overstock idea. Then all of a sudden, Overstock started selling like OEM things at or above market prices. And it wasn't the screaming deal it used to be. It used to be like, hey, we just got 30,000 TVs on a deal from this factory that closed. So we're going to offer them at a 30% discount over TVs of similar quality from other companies. And that was their original draw. And then they sort of went away from that. Um, or is it because BBY can prove fraud, which means they can claw back everything sold during chapter 11. That is an interesting theory. Yeah, because if, if fraud caused you to go into bankruptcy, you can claw it all back and reverse the whole thing. So... Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it's interesting. Interesting theory nonetheless. Dark cultures on bread. BOVH, by protecting rich people, I mean literally protecting them. Turns out there's only so far you can push people before things happen to people who are actively trying to be ontologically evil. Yeah. You gotta figure out a way to take those evil ones and then just drop them off in their club fed prisons and that's that. Uh, looks like I'm at the end of the chat. I'm at four o'clock. I gotta, I, I'm cutting off early cause I have to finish packaging the gifts, the uh, 50 cent wish items and get to the post office before I have to run to work. So uh, yeah, so I did a little bit earlier today. Hopefully on Wednesday we got Rosa. I still have not heard from her yet. Uh, she's working. Um, hopefully I'll have her on Wednesday. If not, we'll just do a normal Wednesday show and then we'll have Thomas Petterfee parody account uh, on on Thursday. And then next week, Wednesday, will be Bruno talking why he's lawyering up and what he plans to do with that. So get the pros and cons out of all that. Okay. Is that it? That's all I got? That's all I got. So we will go to... Where are we? Uh, that one. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Oh, oh, I got a quick thing. <laughs>